Hello QST readers and amateur radio operators worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I am the author of the Ask Dave column in QST. This is the supplemental video for the November 2025 edition, and today we're going to talk a little bit about feeding and fed dipoles. This is going to take a slightly different direction from the usual standard of using a 49 to 1 ballon, and we're going to do this with a quarter wave closed matching stub. Let's take a look at how that works. Let's take a look at the whiteboard here. Now, if you take a piece of transmission line, let's say open wire line, Here's some classic uh, open wire line. This is the real stuff right here. This is usually called window line. It's 450 ohms, okay? And let's take a quarter wave of this at whatever frequency that we are looking at. So that would be from here to here is one quarter of a wavelength, taking into account that the velocity factor in the transmission line is about 0 0.95. Um, okay, this means that when radio waves, which are a form of light, travel through this transmission line, they do so more slowly than they do through the atmosphere or outer space. About 5% slower, as a matter of fact. Now let's watch what happens if we short this end. Okay, we're going to short it. So this end is open. That's the same as taking this right here, shorting it across, leaving this end open. And again, it's a quarter wavelength long. Now, the voltage at this point must be zero, right? Because it's shorted. So here is a quarter of a sine wave going up to here. Now, let's take a look at the current, okay? The current in here will be, oh, it may or may not be out of phase. It really depends. Let's just say it peaks right here and, and comes down like this. What is the impedance at any given point? The impedance is equal to the voltage divided by the current, taking into account, of course, the, the phase angle between them. Now, that means that right here, the impedance with E equals zero is going to be zero. Over here where the voltage is at its highest and the current is at its lowest, we're going to have a high voltage over zero, <laughs> which is technically equal to infinity. But of course, in real practice, when we don't have things quite in phase, it'll be less than that. It's still high, thousands of ohms, okay? still high. So if we have this quarter wave stub and we attach this to something right here, the impedance between here and here is going to be very high. And the voltage will be at a maximum right there. Now what can we do with this? Okay, if this is high and this is zero, there will be some point along here, let's say here, where the impedance is you ready for this? 50 ohms, okay? 50 ohms right there. So let's attach something. What would be a good thing that we could attach to a place that has a constant high impedance? All right, let's just make this a little smaller over here. And let's just say that right here we attach a one half wave uh, dipole. Okay, and we feed it right here. Do you recognize this? It's a J-pole. Okay, and the way it's fed is we find the 50 ohm impedance point and we feed it here and here. Technically, we should be using a balanced feed. So you can put in a ballon there if you want, a one-to-one -one ballon. Okay, if you want to feed it at the 400 ohm point, you can put in a different ballon, whatever you like. Okay, now... This means that if you feed it here, you will have the power, all of the power still goes this way, and you're end feeding a dipole, and it will radiate. Normally, you see it, of course, in the vertical direction, where it looks like a J, 
okay this part up here is the half wave dipole this part down here is often called the quarter wave matching stub not really a matching stub but it does exactly the same thing it's a quarter wave piece of transmission line that we're using as a matching stub now i'm talking about some things that are discussed in the amateur extra licensing manual so this is a little bit advanced but i want to share a secret with you because many many of you have already dealt with j poles can you do this at other frequencies than just two meters and the answer is absolutely yes suppose i make this 33 feet long okay so a half wavelength so the full wavelength is 66 feet that's 20 meters okay now this down here would be a quarter of that or five meters all right and would be what's that approximately equal to 15 to 16 feet now we again find the 50 ohm point on here which may take a little experimentation but we will find it and you can feed it there and a lot of these that i've seen are just fed with uh, coax at that point in fact mfj used to make these if you're going to do this at hf it's easiest to string this as a, a half wave dipole um, which would be 33 feet on 20 meters okay 20 meter dipole and over here we hang the 16 foot matching stub okay and we find the 50 ohm point right in here somewhere at zero here and it's quite high right here and we can feed an antenna this way mfj used to make this antenna interestingly this point right here is also a high impedance with a high uh, with enough voltage and current that you could actually put another half wave dipole out here mfj makes that antenna too they call it a collinear which it is okay so again the bottom line this has been around for a very long time the j-pole this is very similar to the zep antenna and can work upside down you could put this thing upside down as long as this little part here was up in your aircraft and you could feed it at the 50 ohm point or whatever your system was designed for and it would go out like that so the bottom line here is that and fed half wave dipoles have been around for a very long time disguised as j poles okay and we use in this case instead of a 49 to 1 transformer or something like that we use a quarter wave this is one over four lambda matching stub okay can you build one of these you sure can you can make it yourself now note that these are single band because this is a quarter wave only at one frequency all right so we'd usually pick that to be like uh 14.150 which is halfway through and yes this will cover the entire band uh, very nicely now one of the nice things about this antenna that's in fed is that you don't have to have a piece of coax hanging down in the middle or put a ballon way up there or something like that you can put this up you know i would put about three feet of rope between this and wherever you mount it and this out in whatever direction you want even as a sloper going either way and then keeping this part up here which is made of this window line like this keep this off the ground if for some reason you can't get this thing up off the ground a lot then pull it away or something at an angle so it's off the ground and then a lot of people just feed this with coax is that the right thing to do the answer is technically no you want a ballon here but what a lot of people do is they'll build a choke ballon with several turns of coax and then back down to your station. Okay, so there you have it. A very quick look at an NFED dipole that's been hiding in plain sight for many, many, many years, fed with a quarter wave matching stub. And you can do this really with a, an antenna at any frequency. However, if you start doing it at uh, lower frequencies, like 40 meters, you're gonna end up with a pretty long matching stub. And you can't just coil it up. You've got to, to spread the whole thing out there.
So 20 meters and above is about where it's uh, okay. So if you want, for example, to put together a horizontal dipole for six meters, you it's going to be three meters long or about 15, 16 feet. And the uh, matching stub would be seven and a half, eight feet long. You can put that up very, very easily and get onto the part of six meters that's used for FT8 and things like that. So there you have it. I also have a YouTube channel, which you can find at youtube.com forward slash Dave Kassler, all one word. And please, if you are a ham and watching this and are not a member of the ARRL, please join. Until we next meet, 73.